I want you to imagine that Newton's got a rocking chair. So here he is, sitting back, and this chair is rocking. So you get behind Newton, because you guys are good buddies. Boy, wouldn't that be awesome. You get behind Newton, and you give him a push. And Newton goes, whoop, 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 whoop. Now, <clears throat> Newton is oscillating, right? He's rocking that chair. So he's oscillating, and you know you have an instinctive feeling about when you need to push him again. I guess it's when he gets back to where your hands are. If you've had a little sister or a little brother, you've got the same experience on the swings. There are lots of situations where if you push just right, you can get somebody going really fast on the rocking chair or somebody going really fast on the swings. And this is simple harmonic motion. So here's the thing, if you push just right, then you can make the amplitude of the oscillation increase. So, mm-hmm, let's say we time the pushes of the oscillation. Let's see, if we make a graph of position as a function of time for somebody on a rocking chair, we could say that they start, mm, let's say they start forward or something, and they're doing this. You want to push them every time they're all the way back. You want to push here, you want to push here, you want to push when the graph gets back to here again. You want to push with the same frequency as the frequency of the oscillation. Oh, snap. Pushing at dry, let's see, pushing at, ooh, what could we call this frequency? The frequency at which something wants to shake. I'm gonna call that resonance frequency. Pushing at resonance frequency causes amplitude increase. If we push at just the right time, we'll get a steady increase in amplitude. And in fact, this knows no bounds. So we can get, in, in fact, entire destruction, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Washington was destroyed because there was pushing at just the right frequency from the wind. And the bridge shook and shook and shook for hours until it shook so much that it was destroyed pretty awesome, and pushing on a swing shows the same thing. So we need to ask, what is this resonant frequency? So we're going to call it F naught, the essential or natural frequency of an object that is swinging. And well, I'm gonna say that if you notice this, that is a period. Check that out. That's the amount of time between the pushes and uh, well, frequency is one over period. And I could call this the natural period, right? And do you know the natural period of a uh, pendulum? I think you do. Well, the natural period of a pendulum is two pi screwed L over G, we derive that. So one over that period is one over two pi times the screwed of G over L. Interesting. Now what if we've got a different system? What if we've got a uh, mass on a spring? Then we're gonna have a very similar sort of dependence here. That's one over two pi times the screwed of K over M. This is the thing that's on your cardstock sheets. Let's see, we could call this a pendulum in gravity to keep the same keep the same language going on here. Pendulum and gravity, mass on spring. Notice the pendulum's characteristic is in the bottom, the mass's characteristic is in the bottom, and the spring's characteristic is in the top, and gravity's characteristic is in the top. So we got a whole bunch of symmetry between these two equations. But my point is, if you push a pendulum with this frequency that you could calculate, that pendulum will get greater and greater and greater amplitude because you're feeding energy into the system at the right rate. This mass on a spring, if you push it down just when it's at its lowest point, you'll continue feeding more and more and more energy into the system, and so you will cause dramatic increase in amplitude, and things can be destroyed. Now, the next thing I want you to consider is the effect of friction on the system. What if we're pushing and there's friction? 
we're pushing and there's cis oh man if we're pushing and there's friction then we could draw a graph of uh well typically typically with friction if i'm talking about position and time it's going to be doing something like this right notice that the period's not changing here this time to that time is the same as that time to that time bink bink period's the same but the amplitude's dramatically increasing this would be with only friction. And this, oh shoot, if we're pushing at the same driving frequency, we would get something like this. It would go like, and it'd get bigger and bigger and bigger, and we'd be off scale here. This would be <clears throat> with only the driving force. But together, we get this beautifully steady sine wave. I guess it's a cosine. And you will find many, many, many things in your life where they are driven just enough that they maintain a constant amplitude. I'm thinking of um, a grandfather clock, right? It goes tick, 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 tick for a day because there's a spring in there or maybe there's some gravity from the fact that there are some pendulums that you had to lift up. I don't know how we're getting that energy to it. Several different ways are possible. But we're driving with a force that maintains the amplitude steadily. Very clever stuff. Cool. Driving, resonance. Oh, man. Should I point out, should I point out before we go on that all things act like springs in some regime. So everything in the universe has a resonant frequency. Oh man, if you find it, you can destroy it. There was a man who claimed to have a way to destroy any building that had ever been built. He had built a machine that he could sit next to the building and it would gradually drive the building at the resonant frequency of the building until it was destroyed. And he uh, wanted some money from governments to not do that. Right? Good idea. It turned out there were some technical problems with his plan. Also, there are opera singers who can sing in a loud voice. And they say, la, and you know what would be standing right in front of them, right? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? You're thinking there's this uh, crystal glass. And they sing, and the crystal shakes, and if they sing at the same frequency as the crystal shakes, then they can destroy the crystal. There have been a few people who can actually do this, and that's pretty cool, so look that up. It cracks when the resonant frequency is the same as the singing frequency. But, how do you find resonance? How do you find the resonant frequency for something like a glass like that? Oh, you could ting it. Ting. If you bump this sucker, it will tell you its resonant frequency. Guess what? These things here, what do you call this? A bell? Yeah, like the Liberty Bell or something. If you ting this bell, then it will ring out its resonant frequency. It just tells you its resonant frequency. If you want to know the resonant frequency of the desk, you go like this. That's the resonant frequency of the desk. You want to know the resonant frequency of my fingers? That's the resonant frequency of the air around my fingers. Jimmy, what's your resonant frequency? Yeah, resonant frequency of this thing over here. Resonant frequency of the floor. Interesting, there's so much to learn about resonance. Explore.